I'm John Shanehalls, pioneer field agronomist covering northern Ohio. As there's still a lot of soybeans to be planted and the calendar has turned to June, I want to take a couple minutes and offer some management tips to get the most out of these June planted soybeans. First of all, you want to think about relative maturity of these soybeans. Soybeans are photoperiod sensitive, which means that as nights get longer and days get shorter, that's going to trigger the soybeans flowering and maturing response. This is helpful for us when we think about growing soybeans in northern Ohio because as we get later into the season those plants are still going to mature around the same time that they would have even if they were planted earlier. We generally think about a three week planting delay equating to a one week harvest delay. So even as we get into June our full season beans, beans that are you know in the 3.6, 3.7 range can still be planted through about June 15th. Now after the 15th we suggest a slight change or earlier making the 3.3, three, 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 type beans the fullest season varieties and then moving earlier from there. We don't want to get too early with our soybean maturities even in June however because those early beans that are planted late will be short, they will flower and node pod very close to the ground and they, they just won't yield nearly as well as what we can still get out of our full season beans. Another piece of advice would be thinking about row widths. If you have an option and availability to plant soybeans in narrow rows at least 15 inches or less that's going to become very advantageous as we get to these later dates. Wide row soybeans will take a long time to canopy they may not canopy until the end of July um, and that just results in a lot of wasted sunlight energy that those soybeans aren't making use of. Narrow rows will canopy quicker, will help with weed control, and will help to maximize yields by maximizing sunlight interception. Along those same lines we will probably want to start increasing soybean populations as we get into June. Now this isn't necessarily increasing populations to help with our stand establishment because we'll expect with warmer soils we'll have faster germination and better development. However, increasing planting rates will help to cause these plants to canopy quicker, maybe increase the height just a little bit and increase the total number of nodes per square foot. Because these plants will be shorter and they'll be smaller, we need more nodes, so we need to increase the density. I would suggest about a 5 to 10 percent increase in soybean populations per week that we get into June. So in the second week of June being in that 10 to 15 percent increase will probably be prudent, help to capture that sunlight and maximize the yields. Two other important considerations are soybean seed treatments and weeds control. Now I would still consider soybean seed treatments an important component of a June planting for the multiple benefits that it provides. First of all, Ohio State has research from this year that shows that treating soybeans is helping to increase the germination by 40 to 50 percent. That means that if untreated soybeans are at 80 percent germ, when they're treated they can be more like 88 or 90 percent germination after that improvement. The seed treatment helps to kill fungi that live on the seed coats of soybeans and help to lower that germination when they're present in the soil. So increasing the population and increasing the stand of what emerges will be beneficial for yield and seed treatments will help a lot with that. In addition, seedling diseases like Rhizoctonia and Phytophthora thrive in warm soil conditions and seed treatments will help provide that early season vigor and plant health benefit. In addition, many fields have mare's tail and giant ragweed that's growing out of control. It's very important that these weeds are controlled prior to soybean planting for the full benefit and arsenal of products that are available for us to use in terms of herbicide. Now there's probably at this point two main programs to start with and then can be tweaked from there. First of all it would be a Sharpen based program. Sharpen with MSO, with glyphosate, probably at this point including a little bit of 2,4-D still in that tank to help take, care, take down these large tough to control weeds. That's one program that's, that can be successful. The other program is more of a contact based program using Liberty, glufosinate. Now with that program coverage is very important, at least 70 percent coverage of weeds and so high application rates of 20 or more gallons per acre, medium to coarse sized droplets um, and spraying at the right time of the day to maximize the efficiency of those uh, herbicides when the sun is out and the temperatures are warm will be helpful in that control and limit the plant back restriction on the window. 
Also, remember that in the Extend soybean herbicide system, Fexapan or one of the other approved dicamba herbicides can be used as part of a burn down program with no plant back restrictions, which allows great flexibility and excellent weed control up until and even after planting in those situations. I hope those tips and advice are helpful for you. If you have more questions or want to discuss this further, please contact your local Pioneer representative. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.